hello hello so if you guys remember yesterday i or well, last night i had a massive anxiety attack um my eyes are still swollen from that face still red from that um i do have some cameos that i want to film today and i want to be wearing makeup for it it's just oh my eyes feel ir irritated but you know what work comes first Feline's making something in a microwave but I wanted to show you guys. Um, remember yesterday, I had a little Amazon haul. This does fit. Yes, it does. Now let me get you guys closer. I was worried it wasn't gonna fit me, but it does. Oh, she's sliding. <laughs> oh my gosh, I knew that was gonna happen. Feline actually, uh, Feline actually just bought a bunch of clothes and gave me a little modeling sesh. And here's my modeling sesh for you guys. She fits good. So if you guys are, you know, shaped like me, because I know some of you are, um, literally just type in on Amazon 6X Maxi Dress. And there's tons of colors, designs. Um, a lot of floral, which is not my jam. But yeah, it's good stuff. Um, I also, because I was supposed to get another maxi dress, and I didn't get it in the ship, shipment yesterday. But I think we got her, folks. This came today. Yes, we did. And it's the same brand that I'm wearing now. So... I do not know how to pronounce this, but there is the brand for you guys. I just got a polka dotted one. They're super comfy. And then I also got two uh, controllers for the Switch because the other one that we have broke. And I realized, you know what? I want one too. <laughs> Because I just used the controller that came with the Switch. So I just got two of these, which I highly recommend. Um, it broke because it fell, by the way. But these look so cool once they're lit up. Like, you can literally change the color of your Switch controller. Blue, red, pink, purple, or it can be rainbow. But this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. I'll show you guys when it's turned on. So I forgot to show you guys, but I don't know if you remember this gift I got from Pink Sparkles. Me and Twinkie. It's a wooden heart. This is where I have it. Uh, in the living room. Isn't it so cute? I kind of want to figure out where she got that and get more. So we are about to play uh, Mario. And I wanted to show you the controllers lit up. So you press this button right here and it changes. See, look at that. So every single day I could be using a green one. I could use a yellow the next day, blue the next day, orange. It's actually really freaking cool. Yep, I'm gonna be doing pink, but you can also do rainbow. So yeah, we're about to play Mario Kart. I'm gonna whoop her butt. You wish. <laughs> All right, so it is now nighttime and I just wanted to show you guys what these look like in the dark. Feline always has hers on um, rainbow, but I decided pink and purple are my two faves for this. I wouldn't expect purple. It's just so pretty on here. The pink looks really good. Yeah, let me show them the purple. Let me get there. That's the purple. Look how pretty. I don't know. I'm just like low-key obsessed. Hello. So today has been a busy day. I had an appointment, some errands to run, and then we had to come get Twinkie because she had an event appointment and that went really well. It was just like her checkup to get shots. You guys know how that goes. Um, she's in her target goal weight, so I'm so proud of her. The little baby. So I also had a dietitian appointment. So normally my dietitian appointments are gonna be like once a month, check-ins, but this one was more so because I needed a little bit more guidance and instruction, like um, goals and yeah. So, I wanted to share with you guys the goals that my dietitian gave me and I'm not gonna lie they 
kind of shocked me um, because we're all so used to like all these stories, especially like on TV, like Dr. Now, like they, they only get to eat like 1200 calories. It's crazy. So, you know, that's what a lot of people assume the, the journey to weight loss surgery is like, but it's, it's not like that at all like at all in any sort of way. So I do wanna share the goals. So first things first is, these are just like goals to aim for. Um, 30 grams of fiber, which I've never really tracked my fiber before. So I have no idea how much fiber I am currently eating. 85 grams of fat. That seems like a lot, but I also don't know how much I'm eating. I do know like in the past when I try to like restrict a lot when I'm eating like 1500 or something um, I notice that I eat probably like 23 grams or like 25 grams of fat so um, 85 grams seems like a lot especially for like you know my gallstones and such but maybe that's how much I eat on a daily basis so it's gonna be very interesting to like track that and see how much I really am eating so the next one is a hundred grams of protein which is a lot but it's super easy to do like one chicken breast has like 20, um, premier protein shake, which is only like 160 calories that has 30. I feel like protein is easier to get in than what people make it seem to be grammar. I don't, I don't know. Was that grammar? <laughs> the next one is carb intake. So this one, this one in the calories <laughs> took me by surprise, but you know what? Their program is amazing one of the best programs in the country. So here for it, there for it, listening. 190 grams to 220 grams of carbs. So that's obviously not really a low carb diet, definitely not keto. And then calories, 2200 to 2500. So over 2000. So 2500 calories is a lot, but I am putting all control. I am putting everything I've ever thought about weight loss, all of that in the trash and I'm throwing the trash out because I am following what they want me to do and that is how it's going to be. I, I don't have to understand it per se because obviously when you, you know, you think about weight loss surgery and the journey to getting there and all that, like you think of small dainty portions <laughs> i know a lot of you think that way too because that's what i've seen um i show some of my meals and you guys think it's like a massive meal like i recently showed an omelet that was just two eggs and people thought it was more than that i i don't <laughs> i don't understand um people were like that omelet's too big i'm like it's two eggs and some jalapenos like let's calm down but knowing that i can have more than that for breakfast it's kind of freeing but it also puts me in like a weird headspace of like how i used to be um feeling like oh now i have the option to like eat a lot because i i did feel in the last few weeks especially um that i wasn't doing something right and i think that's why i requested a more of a, a guidance to uh, what I should be eating and how much because I feel a little gaslit and I don't want to like I hate when I express how I feel people think I'm like lecturing or preaching it's just a lot of people every time I show something I'm eating or like what I'm doing people are like you're doing it wrong I'm not though <laughs> and that just becomes frustrating because I follow the instructions that are given to me and I'm doing you know what they tell me to do and then like hundreds of people tell me I'm doing something wrong. It's just, it's just hard. It's hard to share your journey because everyone thinks that they have the right answer. And the right answer is my weight loss clinic. So I need to just keep listening to them and um, believe in them because I know what they're telling me is the right thing. And I have to um, ignore the fear, ignore what I used to think about weight loss and all that and just do what they tell me to do. So there is an app that my dietitian wants me to use to like calculate all of this. Um, it's an app that she says that a lot of weight loss patients use or weight loss surgery patients, especially after surgery. 
So she wants me to use it now beforehand. So I'm gonna do that, set my goals in there. I just really wanted to give that update because you know, it was important to me that you guys know majority of this journey and the things that I need to do. Um, it, it holds me accountable. Um, there are other people out there who want to also get weight loss surgery. And I just feel like there's too much of the wrong thing out there. The, and not enough of like, this is the real journey. <laughs> the real journey of someone who's trying to get it. If this isn't for a TV show, I ain't going to Mexico. Um, this is just the long, real journey. And it's not as crazy restrictive right now. Okay, you guys, my desk is currently going down. So if that's what you hear, that's what you hear. Um, let's do a P.O. Box moment. P.O. Box time. Okay, so the first thing is this bag. Is there a letter? Yes, there is. So this is from Hannah. Home collection. Okay, so let's open what's in here. I already know based on her letter, but we're gonna um, surprise you guys. I'm actually so excited to see what this looks like. Oh, you know what is so crazy? My mom for Christmas got Feline something that is like almost identical to this, but in a different color. Great minds think alike. So this is a rose quartz tree. I think this is so beautiful and I honestly love rose quartz. So in here, the little pamphlet, it says that rose quartz is a stone of the heart, a crystal of unconditional love, tenderness, and healing. Aww. I love this. So I am going to maneuver the rose quartz tree and I'm going to set her up somewhere special. I'm going to find her a little home and then I will show you guys in my next video because we're going to find her a cute home and get her all situated. So thank you so much, Hannah. So next we have this little bag, a little bullet journal. All right. I love a bullet journal and no letter. So I don't know who to thank, but someone sent me this really cute bullet journal and if you guys know, bullet journal is just a bunch of dotted pages, but I love bullet journaling. And I think gifts like this is so sweet because it's like, you're taking something that I am passionate about and gifting me something involving that. That's super cute. So thank you to the person who sent this. I should have had the light on the whole time. Sorry, sorry. I don't even know if it made a difference or not. But the final thing we are going to do is we are going to, we're going to, I don't understand what that was. I'm about to be interviewed by you. So I have you guys send me 30 second uh, voice memos, obviously, if you want to on Instagram. Um, and then we listen to them out loud and it feels like I'm being interviewed by you guys. I think it's a pretty cool concept and I've been enjoying it. So I hope that you guys have been as well. Hey, Amber. I've been with you for a long time. I've been watching your videos for a very long time, like years. I have always stood up for you. Aww. I am like rooting for you, love you, you're a queen. We couldn't be any more different, but <laughs> I, just, I just love your videos. People who say you're not entertaining, I have a message for y'all. Why are you watching her videos? She's hella entertaining. Oh. Okay, love you. My 30 seconds is almost up. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I love that, like, you're so supportive, even though we are so different. I feel like opposites attract for sure, um, even in friendship ways. And, like, especially, like, when it comes to, like, watching someone on YouTube, I love watching people who are, like, nothing like me. So I totally get it. And thank you for calling me entertaining because people have been so mean lately. And I know my content is, like, drastically different than it used to be. Um, obviously, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a future video, but, um, I'm just going to leave it with thank you so much. Like, honestly, you made my day. So thank you.
Hi, Amberlynn, this is my question for you. I'm a longtime viewer and I was wondering what you think you could do to amend the relationship with your audience. Um, I'm a general supporter of you. I do have some critiques, but I feel like you always focus on the negativity. And I know you say that you're allowed to respond to negativity, which you totally are. But I feel like your supporters are never addressed as much as your haters. And sometimes that makes me feel like you're not connected with us. And like, why should we support you if you don't focus on us? Thanks. Bye. Wait, that genuinely made me so sad because I, oh, the emotions are coming, the emotions. Um, I don't ever want people to think that, like, I don't appreciate their support because that's definitely not the case at all. I just noticed that through the years, the hate gets louder, the harassment gets more extreme, and with someone who already, like, truly dislikes themselves and has a lot of mental health problems and trauma and things that they need to work on it is a lot easier for the hate and the harassment and like the stalking and the bullying to affect them more and I feel like I have to stand up for myself because so many people think that I am lying about this or that or um, whatever it may be. And people are just believing the lies and they're believing the rumors and they're believing all these things about me that aren't true. And I do feel an obligation to defend my name because for so long um, people thought I was someone that I'm not and it's just like continuing and the only reason is because I never stood up for myself and it's like standing up for myself does make it seem like I'm ignoring the supporters and I'm trying so hard not to. And that is why I'm trying to find different ways of communicating with you guys and all of this stuff. And that is one of the biggest reasons why I do segments like question of the day or segments with, you know, the voice memos being interviewed by you is I want to build a connection. That is why I love you guys sending me letters and messaging me on Instagram and all of this stuff. Like I'm trying to build a connection with my audience and the people who do support me. And it is hard when there's so many people fighting against you. And I'm I'm trying to find, sorry, it is emotional for me. Um, I'm trying to find a balance. Sorry, I was fixing my bra. <laughs> um, I'm trying really hard and it's just people weren't, you know, made to be critiqued by thousands. And I understand that this is like a choice that I made being a YouTuber, but it's hard. It's very hard. <laughs> and it's like, you only understand unless you've been in that situation. And it's just hard for thousands of people to be so against me and so rude and... I don't know. I, I'm trying to do my best, but just know that more than anything, I appreciate my supporters and the people who like see past all the BS and they're able to see my heart. One of the biggest reasons why I stay around. Okay, if I kept talking, I was gonna I was about to ball my eyes out. Let's do one more. Queen, I love you so much. I've been watching you since 2018, probably, and I've honestly seen a lot of growth from you. So I just want to ask, how do you feel about it? And where do you see yourself in 10 years now that you've seen all of the progress that you have made over these years? I'm emotional. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you so much for the question. And, um, it means a lot to me that you've seen growth. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why my channel is like in its flop era. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Because I I also see growth in myself. I'm not perfect. And there's a lot of growth I need to continue doing. And I'm proud of the growth I've made. Because I go back and I look at some of my videos from years ago. And I'm like, yikes on bikes. <laughs> like... And it's like not it's not even things that I've shared on YouTube as well, like private things. Like I have grown a lot 
like I'm 32, I'm going to be 33 in December. Like the person I was in my mid 20s is not the person that I am now. And I know that's hard for a lot of people to, you know, grasp onto. And a lot of people go through a lot of changes, especially around your early 30s and stuff. So yeah, I feel like I'm rambling. But um, where do I see myself in 10 years? I want to be the healthiest and happiest I've ever been. I hope to have a home. I hope to be married, happily, healthily married. And I really, really hope that I've adopted. God, why am I so emotional? <laughs> like, what is happening? Um, okay, wow. I just, I've always dreamt of being a mom. And uh, I kind of got that stolen from me when I got cancer. So that was hard. And um, it's like... There's so many criteria you have to make to adopt, which I understand, but I also don't at the same time because like, I feel like it's too strict to adopt, but too lenient to foster. And there's like a lot of foster homes out there that are not good. They're abusive in every sort of way you can think of. Um, been there, done that. I was in foster care from eight to 18. So... I, I know how that goes. Obviously right now, I I would not adopt because of my weight. I, I would not be able to peacefully take care of a child. And I know that. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I want weight loss surgery is because of my future. I, I, I want that life where I'm a mom because I really, really want to like give a child what I didn't have, but I know that I, I have like I have so much love to give, and I know that I would be a good mom. Like I might not be good to myself, but I would be good to my child, and I would take care of them, and I would love them dearly and wholeheartedly. Wow, what is happening? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I have been so emotional ever since that first therapy appointment. And a lot of people were asking, like, why were you so emotional during it? Like, what do you mean you cried already in your first appointment? Like, it was just your first appointment. No, we talked about some stuff, let me tell you. Because I just wanted it, a lot of it, all out in the open, ready to rumble. <laughs> I feel like I'm really rambly. I don't know what's happening right now. Don't mind me. I'm going through a moment. <laughs> I'm going through a moment. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry this got so heavy and it got so rambly and I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. Um, I don't mean to be so long-winded. I don't really want my being interviewed by you moments to be long-winded because I want to be able to like put a spotlight on several questions in one video but um yikes on bags I know Alex Ashook says that I think I got that from him I don't know but like I said it one time like a week ago and now I can't stop saying it so love that for me okay I'm just gonna end this video with a big fat thank you um to anyone who actually watched through this whole video and sat and listened to me speak um and a big fat thank you to my supporters and people who are kindly here with a good heart and I just appreciate you guys so much and I want more of that energy surrounding my channel because that is what life is about. Life is about love and peace and happiness and spread that instead of spreading, you know, the opposite of that. Anyways, I love you guys. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.